Hi, this is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast recording of the Old Testament. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll be using for the text the Joseph Smith translation of the Old Testament, along with many commentaries from general authorities of the Church, BYU professors, Bible scholars, and others. This format will be very detailed, and so if you want a deep analysis of the Old Testament, you come to the right place. Thanks for your attendance. Hi there, and welcome back to the Old Testament podcast. This will be for Numbers chapter 12. Aren't you lucky? All right, verse 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake unto Moses because of the Ethiopian, or the Cushite woman, whom he had married, for he had married an Ethiopian woman. This was likely the second wife of Moses after the death of Zipporah. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Hath he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Miriam and Aaron complained against Moses. Why? He married an Ethiopian woman, the daughter of the Ethiopian king, as a political alliance, while he was general in the Egyptian army, according to Josephus. She may, however, have been a relative of Jethro and Zipporah. The motivation may have been from jealousy of his position as spiritual leader and prophet of Israel that Miriam and Aaron are complaining. Miriam uh, seems to be mentioned first here. When we have the gifts of the Spirit, we may think that we are superior to those who preside. That will cause apostasy if not corrected. When Miriam sought that position, she not only demonstrated pride, but also sought to set it up in an order contrary to God's system of government. From the beginning, the priesthood callings and the right of, to preside were given to men. Miriam's attempt to achieve equality with Moses was a serious breach of that divinely instituted system or order. Harold B. Lee said, I want to bear you my testimony that the experience I have had has taught me that those who criticize the leaders of this church are showing signs of a spiritual sickness, which, unless curbed, will bring about eventual spiritual death. Continuing verse 3, uh, Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, and unto Aaron, and unto Miriam, Come out ye there unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And there three, and they three came out. And the Lord came down in the pillar in the, of the cloud, and stood in the door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forth. And he said, Hear now my words. If there be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and will speak unto him in a dream. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. And the similitude of the Lord shall he, be, shall he behold. Wherefore then were ye not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. And the cloud departed from off the tabernacle, and behold, Miriam became leprous, white as snow. And Aaron looked upon Miriam, and behold, she was leprous. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not this sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, and wherein we have sinned. Let her not be as one dead, of whom the flesh is half consumed, when he cometh out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, Heal her now, O God, I beseech thee. And the Lord said unto Moses, If her father had but spit in her face, should she not be ashamed seven days? Let her be shut out, of, out from the camp seven days, and after that let her be received in again. The Lord's response to uh, Miriam and Aaron. Miriam gets leprosy or something like it. What happens to us if we speak negatively of our church leaders? We get a spiritual leprosy. Verse 15, with, And Miriam was shut out from the camp seven days, and the people journeyed not till Miriam was brought in again. And afterward the people removed from Hezeroth and pitched in the wilderness of Paran. The seven days of Miriam's separation were passed, and Israel again resumed the march towards the land of promise. They had almost reached its boundary when the, when the event happened, which not only formed the turning point in the history of that generation, but which, more than any other, was typical of the future of Israel. For as that generation in their, un, in their unbelief refused to enter the land of promise, when its possession lay open before them, and as they rebelled against God and cast off the authority of Moses, so did their children reject the fulfillment of the promise in Christ Jesus, disown him when God had exalted a prince and a savior and cry out, Away with him, away with him. And as the carcasses of those who had rebelled fell in the wilderness, so has similar spiritual judgment followed upon the terrible cry, His blood be upon us and upon our children. But blessed be God, as mercy 
has ultimately in store for the descendants of that rebellious generation, so also in God's own time will Israel turn again unto the Lord and enjoy the promises made unto the fathers. And that was by Alfred Edersheim. When Alfred Edersheim wrote this, the Israel had not come back to Jerusalem or Israel yet. I bear testimony that these things are true. This is the end of the chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye.